Okay. Hi everyone, I'm joining AJ today. <laughs> yeah, good trigger, good trigger. <laughs> I'm trying to overcome my desire to be a, you know, fading wallflower. <laughs> She didn't expect that reaction, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, so today is going to be a little different in the sense that uh, with regard to spirit relationships, so today is one of the spirit relationship seminars. We're talking about, uh, today I'd like to talk about some, uh, what I would call some just generalities about uh, reflections about spirit relationships. And also we want to give you the opportunity to ask as many questions as you can about uh, things that you've noticed in your own development and for those of you who have been developing as healers and mediums just things that you've uh, questions that you may have about your own development there and give you the opportunity to ask some questions that we hopefully will be able to answer for you and one thing that's happened over the last four weeks is that Mary's own mediumship began developing as well so as a result of that um, we've been having quite a few spirit discussions as well uh, with spirits now at, in our home rather than having mediums come around to do it. Mary does it and uh, we've had quite a few very interesting discussions. There's one or two in fact that we may play to you at some point in the future. There was one with a group of nuns that we had that was very interesting um, who came to visit us and who in fact have been with Mary most of her life. And, uh, and so uh, at one point it would be very interesting for you to hear what they were saying uh, regarding Mary and myself and our relationship and the possibilities of me being Jesus or not and those kind of things, particularly given my sexual conduct. Yes. <laughs> they were most disapproving. <laughs> so, when's it going on the net? When's it going on the net? I don't know yet. I Ma have Mary, to work through some Mary's got to work through some stuff for, to, to do that first. So um, what we're also doing, something that's happening with regard to the internet is that um, we've started to compile a library of different people's mediumship and started to put people's names uh, that we'll start adding to the internet under contemporary messages. There'll be a list of people's names who are contributing and then under there there'll be the dates that they received their, their uh, channeling or whatever and then the written text of the channeling or the audio, it depends on how the channeling was produced, will be there. So that, that'll be added to the internet over the coming months, um, probably over the coming weeks actually, months. I've already added a few. And, and so some of you who feel that you've received some good messages, if you can send them to me, if you're happy to have them posted for free uh, and have them so that nobody ch is charged for them, then we can put them on the website. And the only thing is they'll need to be in harmony with divine love and divine truth. So. So we'll have a read through them and, and uh, check them out. And if they are, we'll definitely uh, put them on the internet for you. And a lot of them, it doesn't matter so much if your development isn't that good and the message isn't that clear, because one of the things we want to illustrate is actually your own progression as a medium. And the best way to do that is to have you posting different things and you see the accuracy of your stuff improving and you see, you'll see, and, and as long as you're willing to, for the world to see, <laughs> the accuracy of your stuff to improving and, and also the, uh, your own abilities as a medium improving over time, uh, it'll be very, very interesting in the end. And in the end it will become a database that we'll be able to have uh, available for everybody to, to contribute to and also for anybody to search and, and search on different subjects. So for instance, if you wanted to search about subject of a law of attraction, for example, it brings up all of the messages, both in the Paget messages and in contemporary messages that are relate, relating to the law of attraction. And then gives you the opportunity to compile them into a PDF document that you can then download and, and print. And so these are the kinds of facilities we want to add. Of course, adding these kind of facilities uh, ha takes, takes money nowadays, unfortunately. And so what uh, a group of people uh, have decided to do, this wasn't uh, started by myself or Mary, but there's been a group of people who've gotten together and they've decided they want to actually get together a fund that allows us to do technical things like that um, and get things out, uh, technical things out. For instance, 
getting a bit more production into the DVDs uh, in terms of quality and, and being able to take shots of the audience and all those kind of things. That's why we have the two cameras now. And of course all these things take some funds. And so what Dove decided to do, and if Joy, if you could just stand up so people can see who you are, that's Joy. So Joy is the one who approached me and there's a group of people who have talked here with you, if you or Connell stand up as well. There's Brian, so James. John Dole from Pactus, yeah. So those people have decided what they want to do is further the divine truth every, any way they can. And, um, and so what they've decided they wanted to do, and they've asked me to do this, is if they can put a contribution box at these, at these uh, seminars, for, and also they'll create a PayPal account and a, probably a bank account for you to contribute to. If you'd like to not contribute to myself, that's, that's a separate thing, but you'd like to contribute to the furthering of the, of the divine truth itself, then they, they've set up a they want to set up a little fund to enable you to do that. And they'll be using that fund to buy the technological things that we need to, to get in order to um, do a lot of that work. So, so if you'd like to be a part of that, um, that'll, that they're the persons who will be organising that. I don't and will not, I've said to them that I will not have anything to do with how they will use those funds. So don't you come blaming me if they've used the funds to buy a new Mercedes-Benz or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's their law of attraction and that's yours and <laughs> you need to sort that out. Or even an old one. Or even an old one, yeah. <laughs> um, but but their, their desire, I can feel, is that they want to get the truth, the, divi the divine truth, the, both the pageant messages and the stuff that now is being heard out to as many people as possible. Um, and they're not, they don't care really who takes it and runs with it. So, um, and that's really what I'd like to see as well in the end. So, so that's wonderful. So in the future seminars there will be two boxes. There will be one contribution box that's still for myself and Mary and our living and so forth because this is the only way that we earn. Uh, when I say earn, I don't think this is earning anything but um, your donations cover our living expenses and so forth and our ability to travel. Um, and um, any, any other, if you want to donate towards getting things done in terms of DVDs, videos, um, voice stuff and stuff that will eventually be happening on the net that I've just described. Things like having a library of mediumship and a library of uh, different things available for free on the net. And also one of the things they're wanting to accomplish is to translate um, a lot of these things into other languages. So if you have any specific skills in that r regard or in that area um, and would like to be a part of that then uh, um, talk with uh, any one of those uh, four or five people. I think Hiroko's already been translating into Japanese. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Hiroko sent me a website just recently, a Japanese posting, which I understand completely. <laughs> <laughs> I must say. <laughs> uh, it was all in Japanese. So, so, so. But uh, um, uh, so that, you know, anybody, no matter, even if it's just a little that you can do, um, it has an effect, remember, on everybody else when you follow your desires. So, so that's wonderful. Is there any other? Uh, many have asked about, some have asked about the, we're going to have a gathering here and it's open to uh, like a dance night here on Friday the 18th uh, of, uh, and it's courtesy, courtesy of the Patellas um, offering the venue for that. And um, we're not leaving it sort of closed to only the people who come to the seminars or anything like that. So. So we're going to open it up to, to, to who you invite. But there will be some general principles that we want to go through. But we don't know what they are yet because myself and, and, and Mary and uh, we want to talk to haven't Anna, talked. Yeah. So, so when we do that, we'll post yeah. the details on the internet for you. About and some that. times. And, just and some, some times time. and so forth. And some of you have artistic skills such as uh, can play a guitar or, uh, or sing a little bit or whatever. And we'd be happy to incorporate you into the very, very loose program that we're going to create because I myself in particular don't want to organise a single thing. So I'm just going to rock up and dance and uh, 
Well, no, I may, I may play a bit of guitar, but only if I feel like it. <laughs> and um, and the, um, so what, what in the end we want it to be is a fairly, like just a gathering where we can all have some fun and everything not be very serious or organised, if that's uh, possible. Um, so that's, uh, I was going home last night going, I don't want to organise anything, I don't want to organise <laughs> anything. <laughs> So obviously I've got some issues still to work through without that. <laughs> uh, but uh, it could probably comes from organising things for 2,000 years and it just gets a bit tiring sometimes. <laughs> um, so today's discussion, we want to focus uh, on your questions about spirits specifically. So that's our point of today's discussion. And also want to talk a little bit um, before we begin the question session about how spirits are hooking into your emotions. Because as many of you are growing with your mediumship and healing capacities, some of you are noticing more and more spirit influence in your lives. And some of you are getting quite concerned about it. And I notice too that some of you are even concerned about dealing with any emotions because you're worried that uh, you might finish up attracting some spirits who then make the whole situation worse for you. And so I noticed that quite a few people have voiced that concern with me as well. So what we'd like to do today is just talk a little more about how spirits are attracted to you, what they are hanging around you for, and, and why um, certain emotions that you have will definitely connect with them in a much stronger way than other emotions that you have. Does that sound all right? And then uh, we'd like, like to open it up to have a discussion uh, and, and your questions as well. I think there's a small person who wants to contribute to the discussion today. Would you like to... I'm not sure if she does. I asked her oh, earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. No. Um, Fair enough. Yep. Sorry for that. Because uh, what happened was, um, I'll just relate something in a general sense, um, and that is um, a little girl ha who sometimes comes to our sessions uh, said to her mummy, uh, said to her quite a number of times that there's often a monster behind her. Have you heard that from your own children at times? Like, yeah. And um, and she gets this little girl gets very frightened and uh, and describes the monster to mummy. Like, and you want to talk about it, Sienna? You can talk about it if you want. No, she's all right. So what happens is that uh, this, the, the monster is all purple and, and sort of grey and brown and purple and he's got horns and now as a child describes that to you, you'd think, nah, you know, that's a bit strange, like, you know, that might be just their imagination or something. But actually this is the way that many spirits who are in dark locations portray themselves to children. And the reason why they do that is because they want, they're attracted to the fear of the child and then they want to use that fear of both the parent and the child in order to get a hook into the child. And what I'd like to do is, um, is just describe to you how to handle some of those kind of situations as well. In terms, it's quite simple actually, handling those situations. Many of you are frightened of malevolent spirits. So if you think of malevolent spirits, they are the spirits who want to harm you. They are the ones who want to scare you or be angry with you or try to assist you to do things that you don't want to do or that you feel you don't want to do. And those malevolent spirits have a purpose in most cases of connecting with us in some way. Now unfortunately on the planet almost every mental illness is related to these spirits and what they're trying to do on the planet in terms of connection with people. And, and so what happens is we notice, we notice how some people seem to have a connection and then, and then they have a certain experience that's frightening to observe. Do you mind me mentioning your experience, Liz? And the last time we were here doing a spirit session, uh, at lunchtime, it was during, uh, sorry, it was during the break, wasn't it? Um, the three o'clock break. Um, Liz had this, emotional thing that happened and some of you saw that, right? And some of you got really frightened about that, right? As to what was going on. Now, um, 
you started off, Liz, didn't you, feeling an emotion. You thought you were in an emotion. You started crying. You were feeling some grief. And then all of a sudden, what happened then? Can you remember even what happened really? Um, I was, yes, I was in the emotion and I felt like I was doing really well. And then I think I shut down and because I felt my breathing went funny and I was breathing through my throat. Right. And um, because I come from Pentecostal circles, when they, spirits come out, and I often wondered if I had a spirit, that they scream when they come out. And I had this overwhelming feeling I wanted to scream. Yeah. So I said, okay, well, this is actually <laughs> what's to come out. So I actually allowed the spirit to do that. Yeah. And I actually allowed the whole process. Yeah. Now knowing what I know, that um, it actually just took over me yeah. then after that yeah, yeah. So, so I you, actually you the act of you stepping back from your emotion alla and allowing this process to happen because it was a part of your background <laughs> religiously just allowed these spirits then to basically take over and and they were in a convulsive state actually weren't they they were sort of shaking and convulsing you you fell on the floor and 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 do you remember do you remember how I got you to come back it was quite simple wasn't it you just um, called my name yeah. <laughs> So all I just went in and whispered in Liz's ear, just come back, Liz. Come back here, Liz. Come back here, Liz. And I only said that four or five times. And, uh, and Liz then became present again and then realised what happened. Can I just say, AJ, I'm not actually afraid of that because I know that I actually um, allowed the whole process to happen. Yeah. And now, now that, like I said, know what I know, that it, it wouldn't happen again like that. Exactly. But there are a lot of other persons who saw it that are very afraid still. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to address. Yeah. Their fear, not yours. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just trying to allay their fears yeah. that I had control over that, but it was... Um, oh, I don't want you to allay their fears at all. Because <laughs> remember, we want to deal with their fears. You, you remember the homework that you had last time? What was the homework you had, for those of you who are mediums? To give yeah. yourself silly and just let yourself start connecting with some of the fears that you have, right? Remember that? How many of you actually have tried that during the month? All right, just a few, yeah, okay. And um, how many of you did it with earth change stuff and actually connected with things? How many of you actually connected with something when you did it with earth change stuff? So a few of you. What, how about those who did it with spirit stuff? You remember I said to the mediums, the, the healers do that, yeah? And how many of you actually connected with fears related to that? Well, that's good, that's good. So there's a bit of fear processing going on during the month. There's not enough fear processing going on. <laughs> These fears have a huge effect on your life and your interactions with everything around you, including the spirits with you. And your fear, your unresolved fear, is what gets you into your rage and anger. And this is something that needs to be addressed because when you're in a state of anger or rage, you are in the most heightened state that a spirit can actually connect to you with. Right. So it's actually, if you're looking at what is the most dangerous thing for you, and I'm not talking about feeling your anger and rage as an experience, I'm talking about projecting your anger and rage to others. Remember there's, two, there's, two, there's a difference between being in the emotion and experiencing it and releasing it and living in the emotion permanently. There's a big difference between those two states. So what I'm talking about is when you live in your fear rather than releasing it, you will all, always get into anger at different places. And when you live in your anger and rage and project it at others, in other words, yell and scream at your wife or your husband or your children or you know something that's happening around you, when you're in that place, what is happening is you are also in a heightened place where spirits can now connect with you to a greater degree. Now, the type of spirit that wants to connect with you is the spirit who has exactly the same type of emotion inside of them. And not only do they have exactly the same type of emotion, but where they are, they can't seem to have it fulfilled. Now, when you're in a state of rage or anger, What's the thing that you want to fulfill? You want to break things, don't you? You don't mind about even breaking people at that point, do you really? You don't mind about breaking relationships? You know, a few plates in your hand, well, they're goners, aren't they? Like, you know, off they go. 
So you want to break everything when you're in that state. And you see, in the spirit world, people who are in this terrible rage have nothing to break. There's the things they're angry about are all not there with them, and they're, but they're in this rage still. So what happens is they get immediately attracted back to earth and to somebody who's in that state and they heighten that state to get rid of some of their own frustration. Does that make sense? To get rid of some of their own angers and frustration. Now that is a very dangerous place for you because in that place... You now have maybe one, two, five, ten, you could have even a group of them all influencing you. How do you think a lot of these horrific murders that occur, occur? We have this thing called now on earth temporary insanity where a person's temporarily seemingly insane and they go and do something and then they come to reality and they're guilt ridden because of what they did. How do you think that state happened? It happened through this connection, through this connection with spirits, right? And so it's so important for you to own your emotion rather than live in these states of fear and anger. And this is why I've been so focused on it in the last few months with you, getting you through these phases. Remember like yesterday when we talked to a few of the people who were come up the front to, to be talked with? Remember that a number of them went firstly through this real big anger phase, maybe even for a year long of anger phase. And then they went into this fear phase for sometimes up to a year long as well. And then they started getting into their deeper emotions. Right? Now, while you're in the anger phase and while you're in the fear phase, they are the most dangerous times for you. Not only, f like, not only for you in terms of spiritually, but that because you could easily just walk away from the path of truth in that moment, but also dangerous for you physically because if you've got some spirits around you egging you on and you're not resolving the underlying emotional reason why they can egg you on and, and help you do things, then you can get into a pretty bad place pretty quickly. It's in those times that relationships get destroyed, you know, Things get destroyed <laughs> and even we might even have self-harm type emotions that come up that attract these spirits who are in self-harm and we, where we actually finish up doing something to ourselves as well. Now, <clears throat> those states are states that can happen but don't have to. During, those, during that period of time, we can also do things like drink heavily for example. So you know how we, all of a sudden we feel like, oh, I've got to have a drink, I've got to have a drink, and then you know, as soon as you have the one drink, you've got all of these other spirits angry. So some of you have had that experience, you've had that experience, uh, where, where um, you, do you want me to say what your experience was? Yeah. Okay, um, what happened was, what hap was sitting around a group of women, everyone's drinking. You know, the women, one of the women mum, and and drinking, and I've got issues with women be, being the, daughter, the son of mum, you know, and, and got in, injuries particularly with mum, and then there's these other women all drinking as well. Now, what happens? They're all drinking, and all of a sudden, whoosh, all these other spirits come in. All these women spirits surround the women who are drinking, and all the men spirits surround the man who's drinking, and before you know it, there's an event, an event into a rage, and before you know it, break something, and then somebody calls the police and before you know it, you're whacked in jail. Yeah? And, and then you come to and you realise, wow, like that all happened. <laughs> Why? Because all this unresolved emotion that's going on inside of myself that I don't own and so then I feel like I need to have a drink to calm everything down. I have a drink before I know it. Now I'm being influenced by spirits to actually go and act out my rage rather than deal with my underlying grief. Now these events happen on a moment by moment. You have a look at the world around you. They're happening all the time. You go down the street at Mooloola Bar on a Saturday night. <coughs> They're happening all the time. All right, you can see the spirit's connection. Many of you, now that you've been developing a little with regard to mediumship, many of you have been noticing spirits a lot more, haven't you? Some of you I heard are even seeing them now, like... Didn't you say earlier, Liz, you, you uh, I heard, overheard a conversation where you said how uh, 
you're driving along a road or something and someone walked into a semi or something and, uh, and then walked through it. And then you realise you were seeing a spirit and not a person. Yeah. And so a lot of you are starting to have these things open up for you. <coughs> and you can also sense when people are being influenced by spirits a lot now. You notice that? You, you can see the change in them, can't you? You can see, I'm talking to a normal person, I'm talking to the normal person I remember, and wow, now I'm not talking to the normal person, I seem to be talking to somebody else now. What's going on there? And that's where the spirit is now overcloaked, connected with the emotion. And now I'm talking to a combination of their unhealed emotion and that spirit's unhealed emotion talking through them. Now these are all going to be issues, obviously, as you progress on the divine love path. Because as you progress on the divine love path, all of these natural mediumistic tendencies that we all have start opening up and everything starts getting more powerful for us and, and we start opening up all of these different senses, the sense of sight, of seeing spirits, hearing them, feeling them. When uh, myself and Mary first uh, got together again, we would go into a shopping centre and Mary would sometimes feel so overpowered in the shopping centre, she'd just, I want to get out of here, I want to get out of here. And I'm just waltzing around, you know, pushing the trolley and whatever. And, and she's like feeling all of that really intense spirit activity and it's just overpowering her emotions. That was happening a lot, wasn't it? It <coughs> still happens, especially if I'm uh, avoiding an emotion myself. Mm. And we go to a large public area, it's very intense. Yeah. And so many of you in the past would have gone, oh, this is frightening me, this is frightening me. And what you do then is avoid those situations, don't you? Now, what, what I'm suggesting is not to avoid the situation because avoiding the situation is avoiding your core emotion. What I'm suggesting instead is to actually feel the core emotion that these events trigger inside of you. Allow yourself to feel the emotion that's going on. So what emotion do you feel when you walk into it and there's a creepy vibe? What kind of creepiness is it? Is it like a sle sexual sleazy creepy? Is it, is it like an anger rage creepy? Is it like a murderous creepy? Like what kind of feeling are you feeling? And allow yourself to feel it because there's something inside of you that's resonating with that. When I was uh, younger, um, I used to walk into places where Everyone in the place, and this might have happened to you at times, I don't know, where everyone in the place just turns around and looks at you. And then they realise they're not looking at anything imp important and then they turn away again, right? Has that <laughs> happened to you? Are you? Now that used to happen to me all the time if I ever walked into an Australian pub. So I used to just avoid a pub, completely avoid a pub. I used to walk in, everyone would stop and just look. And I'd freak out, like... What's going on here? And so what I'd do in the end is I'd walk straight back out again, <laughs> right? And if I wanted to, back then I used to drink some alcohol, so, so I'd, go to the, I'd go to the bottle instead, right, <laughs> and pick up the, through a drive through And uh, by the way, overseas I realised they don't have drive throughs many of places. Really amazing when they come here and they see you can actually drive through for alcohol. It's pretty amazing. But anyway, that's aside. And, and so I'd go there to avoid all of the emotional projections that were going on. After a while I started realising that, so what I did instead was I went in there and just allowed the bombardment of the emotion and a lot of it was coming from spirits, not from people, and I would just let myself feel it, like what's going on here, what, what am I, and it was fear, it was a fear I had. And, uh, and then after a while, I still walk in and have the same thing happen, but now, now I'm not afraid of it anymore and it doesn't have that same reaction in me anymore. And it's the fear and the anger that these spirits want to connect with you with. If we have the mic over here. Um, so, are you saying that... So, um, how do I put this? I have a lot of anger towards men mm -hmm. um, because I get a lot of sexual project projection from them. Yep. So would that mean that it would be beneficial for me to go out or something, like to a club or something, and then feel the feelings 
there or sort of? Let's look what's happening in terms of what's going on with these interactions because the whole picture, not just the little picture which seems to be the sexual projection from one person. Yeah. You've got the man, whoop, that one's not very good. You've got the man on earth, right? He sees you and he projects a sexual projection at you. Right? So there's a feeling going on inside of you at that point. But before he even projects a sexual projection at you, he is surrounded by other men in the spirit world who are constantly looking, at, looking for women to project sexually at. Yep. Right? And they get that emotion satisfied by doing it through this man. So he's surrounded by men who are looking for women. On the t and you see this walking along the street sometimes. You can see the men scanning yeah. every woman. Many of you women have felt this, right? You're walking along the street and, the, and you notice this man and he's just scanning, he's, he's undressing every woman basically who walks in front of him. But what's going on there is this, these spirits are heavily influencing him to do that, right? And it's an unhealed emotion within him. And now it could be to do with sexual matters, but often it's not. Often it's to do with childhood issues with regard to his mother and the fact that he feels disapproved of by his mother and, uh, and all, a lot of other issues with regard to his mother. That's the real thing going on in many cases, but he doesn't understand that. And you've got this group of spirits in the spirit world who can't have sex because where they are, there's no women to have sex with because they're in this projection state that most women are repelled by and so there's no women in the same location. Does that make sense in the spirit world? Yep. And so they hang around this man waiting for opportunities to project at women. Now inside of me, I've got issues with, well, inside of yourself I'm saying here, you've got <laughs> issues with anger at men. But just one thing, you said it's because they sexually project at you. Now is it because of that? Probably not. <laughs> okay. It has to be something related to childhood. Now, it could be that your dad sexually projected at you. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or your dad used sexual projection somehow to control you. Or it could be that your mum had anger with men, and that's the reason why you have anger. Yeah. There's, there's lots of different causal <laughs> reasons, right? So I have a causal emotion inside of me. I, I'm the woman, let's say, and I have causal emotions inside of me that cause me to be angry at men. And then, so I would also have women who are angry at men. Not only will you have women that are angry at men, but you'll also have some men who are angry at women for being angry at men <laughs> surrounding you. Okay. Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay. So there's your group of cat. That's your group hanging around you, right? Now, what are they looking for? They're looking for men who they can see typify the person you're angry with. Does that make sense? And they will seek them out, just like the spirits here seeking out women that they can sexually project at. Can you see like, and that's why you'll notice every sexual projection that comes your way. Yeah. Right, because you've got these women constantly saying, see there's another one, there's another one, see there's another one, look at them, They're all the men are bastards, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? And that's their set of beliefs. Does that make sense? Yep. That's their set of emotional beliefs that they are not, they are holding on to. So there's a lot going on, right? This is all going on at the same time. Now, what do we, how do we deal with this? Now, we know that anger is an emotion that we choose to feel so that we feel powerful, right? We want to feel powerful and so we choose anger because in reality we are afraid of something inside of us, something inside of me at the childhood level. So what can I do with this uh, from an emotional perspective? Well what I can do firstly is start dealing with the fact that I'm actually afraid when I'm angry with men. So when I'm walking down the street and I get a sexual projection at me from men and I feel Actually, there's a feeling of fear about this. This feels very unsafe, doesn't it? What will this man do? If, he, if there were no laws, what would he do? He might even consider raping me if there were no laws, right? So that's going to trigger a lot of fears in me, right? There's some fears that are going to come up there. 
And under, that, under those fears are the causal emotions that, that attract the event in the first place. The other thing that we can do is start addressing the issue with the spirits that are around me. So if I'm a medium or a person who can feel these spirits with me, I can start talking to them about how they feel. Because if I talk to them about how they feel, there's a high likelihood that my feelings and their feelings are going to be very similar and it's going to actually heighten my feelings and help me get, connect to my causal emotions. Can you see that? Now, the other day I did this uh, a few uh, be a month ago or so now, I had two men spirits with me who basically believed that every woman is mercenary. Mercenary. Every woman basically only d gives you things to get something from you. That was their belief. When I started feeling their emotions, I started writing and feeling their emotions and writing, I really connected to a lot of those, a lot of those emotions inside of myself. Because in my life, that's how many women have treated me. Does that make sense? And I started really connecting with a lot of those emotions. In the process of connecting to those emotions, I started releasing them. And in the process of releasing them, there was less of a connection between me and those men. And also, those men started to, started to feel their emotions too. Does that make sense? And in the process of feeling their emotions, they finished up leaving me. Okay? Just through that interaction. So does that answer your question in terms of what's actually going on? And the key, the key is actually Can start I? getting into this state. And Mary, yep, you want to say? Um... So maybe instead of actually putting myself in a position um, to try to trigger myself, just sort of go with my law of attraction normally? Or yes. Is, yeah. yeah. Can, I, can I add a little bit? Because yeah, yeah. I, I have a lot of experience with this very um, uh, situation. And, uh, yeah, for me, the big thing was looking at the anger that I felt was justified, which um, you have that feeling inside of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And once I could look at, I really had to feel emotionally about what my anger does, um, to, even if it is to people like to people who I feel are perpetrating something against me. Um, so I did a lot of work on my anger, and your law of attraction will bring you the things that you you're ready for. Like if you get all dressed up and go out to a club right now, you'll just come home really really angry. <laughs> Yeah. It, it, as you are, exactly and I haven't now. been out yeah. since I've been on this bath. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure I haven't. Yeah, yeah damn yeah, the so. bath. Like, <laughs> that don't was good. Any, I don't want to go. Don't out. have any fun anymore. I know too much about. I what's draw going cartoons on. now instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I also had to be really honest about myself in these interactions, yeah. um, and my own willingness to. What happened, what used to happen with me is that I would receive sexual projections from men. Um, I'd be very angry about how men view me, how I'm treated as a woman. But I also had to be really honest with myself about how much I would allow small myself to give men small amounts of sexual energy in order, which was, it's a very fear-based thing that I used to do. Yep. I would never give a guy a come on ever, but I might be really especially nice to them and um you know play along with them because underneath i was very and the place i'm at now <laughs> is very afraid of men and their sexual projections because i, I don't feel anger is a defense anymore and i don't want to give anyone any sexual energy apart from my soulmate um and now i'm starting to hit um into fear i'm not even to the grief yet but um it's been a really gradual process for me and I have done a lot of talking with spirits who've been with me as well. And okay. if I can just illustrate what was happening for Mary, is that her fear was about men's sexual projection. She felt a, f a strong feeling of being unsafe. So many of you women feel do. this, right? Whenever a man sexually projects at you, there's a really strong inside feeling of, like, I'm unsafe here, you know. I've got to do something to get this situation back in control. Can I just say that I, I wasn't even aware of that feeling within me. I was either angry or I was playing along without even really being conscious of what the whole exchange was about. Yeah. And it's only as I've worked through those different things that I can now feel the terror that I have about 
men's sexual projection. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realise um, the fear until just before when you were talking about, um, you know, uh, if a man is projecting sexually, I might feel like he would want to rape me or whatever. And yeah. But I've obviously shot that down. Yeah, exactly. Now, so. Well, it's not a very pleasant feeling to feel, of course. No. And so we have a tendency to shut down those feelings. And instead, um, and what, what many women have learnt to do as a result is to barter sexually in order to feel safe. So in other words, if I give the man a little bit of sexual energy, hopefully that will make him go away. Does that make sense? Hopefully that will make him get himself under control and hopefully that will make him feel like you know, you know, he's all right and everything will be all right and we'll calm the whole situation down. You see, And so oftentimes we get drawn into giving something we don't even really want to give because we're just feeling unsafe. The key is to feel the unsafe, to really feel the unsafe because you'll connect with the grief of what's underneath that feeling. Now for Mary it's been some first century experiences about her different times she was raped and, and hurt by men. And for many people it will be related to childhood events that occurred that they felt very unsafe sexually in. Or oftentimes in our childhood we can actually see spirits who want to sexually interfere with us. And even though they may not do it, we can still see them because we're children who can see things very easily generally. Or it could be that we have been abused sexually and we also, and oh, by the way in almost every sexual abuse instance, spirits are involved. Spirits are influencing the people who are sexually abusing you. And so there's a lot of fear based type of uh, uh, things that need to be faced and then underneath that of course a whole series of grieving things to do. So can you see, if, the main thing is to see the relationship of what's going on and then just allow the law of attraction. So still, like, like I say to Mary, don't, don't stop dressing down, darling. Let yourself dress like how you want to dress, you know. I actually dress very boringly. <laughs> <laughs> As a result. Um, yeah, and I didn't realise that until probably just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I don't put any effort really into your what I look appearance. like. Yeah, cause because I don't want to get that extra attention. Yeah. yeah. So my suggestion is just do, just connect to your own desires to feel good about yourself and allow yourself to do that. And then and just allow the normal law of attraction to bring you the events. And then firstly start to allow yourself to feel the fear and then the underlying grief. But also allow yourself to start feeling the feelings of these women who are with you who have the same emotion. Okay. Right? And allow yourself to start connecting here, not at the anger level, but at the fear and the grieving levels. And um, so for me to get out of feeling the anger, is that something that I can just sort of choose to do or do I need to work, like uh, do I need to actually process that anger? We feel um, anger because we do not want to feel the fear. So the first thing to address is why don't I want to feel the fear? What, what am I so afraid of with this fear? Am I afraid it's going to overcome me? What, what, are, what's, what am I, why can't I handle my fear, in other words? And when you allow yourself to work through that emotion, you'll get to a place where you allow yourself to feel your fear. And that's a much more powerful place for you. And it's also, by the way, a much more powerful place in terms of your connection with the spirits around you. Yeah. Because now these spirits are not influencing you in this area. They're now connecting more to this fear. In other words, they will feel their fear along with you. And that will help you feel your fear even further. Okay. And then when you connect to the grief, they will feel their grief along with you, which will help you both release your causal emotion. And once that happens, you'll find that there will be no fear in you and you'll be able to walk along a street. And actually there will be less projections at you as well because this group of men are looking for women who are afraid sexually yeah. in order to project that because that's what they get off on. They love that. They love to s pick up on a woman who they can project sexually at and really feel this strong sexual projection at because what they get off on is feeling the woman feel a bit afraid and you know it just heightens their emotions about all of that. Does that make sense? And the reason why they want that is because when they were little they felt powerless with women <laughs> And they want to get back at women as a result of that. You okay, find? thank you. So once you understand the dynamics of what's happening, you can start to actually see how important dealing with your own emotion is. <coughs> yeah. And um, if we go to, <coughs> and then Monique, and then Monique after.
Simon. Simon. It's just a spirit man. So why, why are you allowing them to overcollect you like this? But what's going on for you? Why do you allow that? Can you see what's going uh, on? I think I'm the man in that picture. This man here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I felt that grief with my mom. Yeah. But if I'm projecting the, the sexual thing of to onto the woman, yeah. um, I can't connect with that. It's... I, I, I don't know. It's... <laughs> Can you see why you want to project at the woman? Can you see yeah. when the woman gives you back some sexual energy, you then feel like better as a man? Like, yeah. Yeah? And that's related to... So, so the key is stop the projection at the woman and allow yourself to feel your grief with women. Like, allow yourself to grieve about how, how you feel with women because you feel quite uncomfortable at times with women. So allow yourself to feel that discomfort that you have with women. And then go deeper into that feeling that you have about yourself when you're with women. Right? And the feeling is that you're not anything to a woman and they don't really care about you. And allow yourself to feel some of those emotions. But can I just rewind? Because the first thing that happened was that you allowed yourself to be overcloaked by a spirit as soon as you've connected into your fear about talking. And the question I have for you is, why do you keep allowing that to happen? There's something that happens inside of you that allows that to happen. So here you are, you're, you're the person, right? So here you, here's the spirit who, you're very highly mediumistic as you now know, right? So here's the spirits that are with you. There's quite a few, of course, who are always with you because you're, you're easy to connect with. Now... Why do you want them to come in to, like, why do you allow them to come into you is probably a better, better way. There's something that happens just that instant beforehand that I'd like to identify for you that occurs. I will... Um, but just before, you could, just before you had to speak and you got the microphone, what was your feeling? Could you feel what you felt? I think I want to feel that fear. You were to afraid? Talk. Yeah. yeah, I'm afraid to talk. You're afraid to talk, yeah? Yeah. Now, but what happens whenever you're afraid of anything, there's a pattern that you've gotten into now. And this pattern is that you go out of your body. Yeah, I, I feel it. You can I feel yourself it, yeah. even lift out a little, right? Can't you? You sort of, you sort of close e your eyes trying to calm yourself down is what you're thinking. It's, it's easier for me then. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, what you're yeah, actually doing is detuning from your own fear and lifting yourself out of your body a little. And as soon as you do that, any spirit who is with you is just going to use your body instead. And, and a lot. A lot, yeah, as you know. And that's been happening quite a lot, hasn't it, over the last few weeks in particular? Every time. It's, yeah. so, it's so horrible. Yeah. Now, the way to, to stop all of that from happening is very simple. Don't choose to leave your body when you feel an emotion. Stay connected with your body while you're feeling an emotion. Never choose to leave it. Does that make sense? Always stay with it. Now, most people who are mediumistic have learned to leave their body when they feel an emotion to avoid their emotions. This is what you do quite a lot, Liz, right? Same kind of thing. Leave your body a little when there's an emotion coming up. And Simon's even like, in a much bigger place with that. You're, like, you're so mediumistic. It's so easy for you to just lift yourself out of the situation from an emotional perspective. All you need to do is choose, choose the fear. Choose to feel what you're feeling instead. Does that make sense? Stay in that. And it doesn't matter even if you don't speak. Stay in that and feel that fear, and then you'll connect lower. But you won't have these spirits overcloak you. Right? As soon as the spirits overcloak you, you're no longer even feeling your own emotions, and it's a pointless place to be in. Because all they're doing is expressing their emotions through you. Does that make sense? No, thank you. Yep. Um,
Yep, just you. Oh, Monique, probably, you had your hand up first, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go for Monique and then you. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask about the um, spirit projection, uh, sexual projections with spirits and um, the feeling of being um, sexually abused by um, my father. Yeah. Um, even though I can't remember any physical, <laughs> any physical events, but when processing... Um, like for instance, when the mosquitoes were coming to bite me, going into that the anger and rage at the at the sanctuary, and then feeling that I, w I was being touched by spirits and like in childhood, like really, um, you know, them doing everything you could imagine to me as a child. I was reliving these things from childhood. Yeah. Um, and the terror that went with that and, and, and the pain and grief. Yep. How, how does, I'm sort of, how does, um, like how, how, does, how does that relate to a father and spirit and being, do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yep, yep. Well, let, let's, let's do the whole example, like the whole background of what happened rather than, and not your specific situation I'm not going to give, but the whole background of what happens in these situations. Firstly, every child has a mother and a father, right? The mother and a father have a group together of emotions. Whatever these emotions might be, there's a group of emotions that together, when these mother and father is in the same location, these emotions mix. In the spirit world, you actually see it like colours and energies all mixing together. And some of you who can see auras or those kind of things, will see this mixture of what you would now know to be emotions, but they're mixtures of colours mixing together to create an energy field, if you like, or an energy of emotions. And this mixture causes a law of attraction with the spirit world. So you have spirits who are attracted to the mixture of emotions. Now let's say the mother has been abused when she was a child sexually abused when she was a child. And let's say the father comes from an abusive male line. In other words, he might not have abused, been abused himself, but he might be a member of, a, you know, his father and his grandfather may have been abusers of children, of girls or something like that. So he may <coughs> not even be an abuser himself, a sexual abuser himself, but he may still have an emotion in him where it's allowable. Does that make sense? Now, under those circumstances, the mother's been abused and the father's got this emotion where abuse isn't an acceptable form of behaviour, where it's not something that he condemns greatly. What that's going to mean is there's going to be an attraction of all sorts of spirits into that family structure, if you like. And the group of spirits are going to have a lot of sexual injuries. The sexual injuries on the male side will be we're allowed to get what we want sexually. The sexual injuries on the female side will be we're going to be harmed by men, we're going to you know, be hurt by men and so forth. And so that will attract a whole group of spirits who have these similar injuries. Does that make sense so far? Now, a girl child is conceived and born, right? right. Because those injuries are in the parents, that child now cannot be protected sexually from the spirit world. Does that make sense? Yeah? Now, because of that, that child can be harmed by a person on the earth who might be an abuser or could be harmed from spirits who are abusers because the collective energy of the unhealed emotion of the parents can't protect the child with regard to sexual abuse. This is why it's so important if you're a parent, it's so important to deal with your emotional issues because it, your unhealed emotional issues cause a lack of protection for your child. Now the way God created it, it was the opposite also occurs. If both parents had healed their sexual injuries, 
The effect energetically is like this. Right? Now the child is enveloped by that same healed energy of a state of love. So the chances of this child now being, being affected by spirits directly is negligible. In other words, it's, it, it's almost impossible now for this child. If the, and if these two parents had dealt with everything, it would be totally impossible for this child to be harmed sexually by spirits or even people on earth. Does that make sense? Or if they were harmed sexually due to some kind of still injury within them, the parents would notice it immediately. In other words, it wouldn't be an ongoing thing that happens every day or every third day or something like a lot of abuse occurs, but rather it would be something, my child's changed, what's going on? Something's really wrong. I know something's wrong. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And there will be automatic acknowledgement of something being wrong. But what actually normally happens is the opposite of that, of course. Unfortunately, most parents avoid strenuously dealing with any issues of sexuality and any injuries with regard to sexuality and particularly injuries regarding abuse. And so those parents cannot protect their child from any type of abuse, even from the spirit world. And so what you find is many children have a number of experiences where they feel like they've been abused and many times they have been not by people on earth but actually by spirits in the spirit world connecting to them. Right? And this is why you have these uh, events. Now the spirits, the child also has a group of spirits around it and the there are its guardians and guides around the child. And what the, they'll often help the child do in this circumstance is they will help the child go out of body to avoid the physical experience of pain that occurs during sexual abuse. Does that make sense? And what they do is they finish up taking the child to a safe location in the spirit world while the abuse is occurring and then the child usually comes back to their body after the experience is finished. And this is one of the major reasons why many children do not have very clear memories of the actual occurrence except the beginning of it and the end of it and the aftermath. Does that make sense? You want to say? I just wanted to raise a question at this point that we received via email about that very thing. Mm -hmm. uh, someone wrote to us and asked if, um, if we have to connect with the emotions of the abuse in order to release it, why has God allowed a system where when I was a child I was actually taken away from my body um, and I, c I now have to struggle to try and remember it? So, one, so do you understand that question? Like a lot of people now struggle to, rem to actually connect with the abusive emotions because they've been taken out of body to protect them. The truth is you only have to connect with the ones you, you felt. The ones that you don't feel, then you don't have to connect with them for a start, right? And that's part of the process. The other thing is that these guides are there to do whatever they can to protect the child. That's the role of the guardian. And it's an act of love for them to help the child be protected in that way. So all the person needs to do is feel and trust their feelings and emotions of what they feel occurred and just allow themselves to process that emotionally. They don't need to remember everything because they will not be able to remember everything because they weren't even present at the soul level experiencing everything. Does that make sense? But there will often be a lot of physical sensations that they will feel and remember. And this is why a lot of children in particular get things like, you know, who have been abused get, that get things happening to their private parts like genital... Um, problems, um, things like cystitis and, and thrush and those kind of things also happen a lot to children who have been abused either at the spirit level or at the physical level and these are things to look at as well as signs that these things occur and the person needs to allow themselves to feel their emotions about those things even as an adult. So the key is to just feel the emotions that you feel, you don't have to manufacture new ones. Right? You just need to feel the ones that are present in these situations. 
But can I just state a few more things before we ask another question about all this? When these take this child out of body, when these guides take the child out of body, they're guardians actually, take the child out of body, the child unfortunately can often learn to get away from experiences that are negative emotionally by going out of body. So because these spirits have taken this child out of body on many occasions that they've been abused, the problem is, is that in time the child may learn to go out of body itself when it's in other situations quite easily. Now the problem with that is that every emotional situation that comes along then that the child doesn't like, it goes out of body. And there's many people who have learned to go out of body to disconnect from their own physical pain and emotional pain. Now my suggestion is if you're going out of body all the time to disconnect from pain of any type, whether it be emotional or physical, you would be far better off now that you know the truth to actually reconnect with your body. If you stay connected with your body physically and its aches and pains, you will be able to connect much better to your emotions. But if you go out of body, you'll be avoiding your emotions. So that's just something to bear in mind with all of those processes. So, can you see what we need to address? We can see there's a lot of things going on in the case of abuse. If we're a parent, we need to address our own emotional hurt regarding sexuality, right? Because if we don't address our own emotional hurt regarding sexuality, we cannot protect our children from that hurt. We think in our in our very finite thinking, we think that because we don't talk to our children about what happened to us when we were little, that we're protecting them. That's what we think, isn't it? But in reality, it's because we're not feeling what happened to us when we were little, we're actually not protecting them at all. And that's an issue we need to address as parents. When you're that person who's been hurt, Look at how often you go out of body to get out of emotional situations. Allow yourself to feel about it emotionally. Allow yourself to reconnect with your body completely and really feel yourself again and to be stay in your body when you're feeling your emotions. It's going to be a very much more powerful way of you dealing with your emotions. If you go out of body, you are going to be avoiding dealing with those emotions and processing those emotions and the problem with that is that you will just lengthen the amount of time you deal with spending, uh, spend dealing with emotions. So this is something that's happened for yourself, Simon. Obviously in your childhood, you at some point chose to go out of body quite a lot, right? And maybe it was just to get away from some emotional pain, maybe it was to get away from the feeling that you were not being loved and accepted. But because you're so, you can do it so easily, what's happening now is the instant you do it, you're getting uh, you know, a spirit come in instead and using your body. And many of you, ha how many of you have been to Pentecostal type churches where they had healing and speaking in tongues and all those things? Many of you? Uh, there's, yeah, there's a few. Anyway, some of you will notice that in those kind of venues, when a person goes out of body, a spirit overtakes them and they call it being overcloaked by the spirit. You know, they feel it's a wonderful thing. But actually it's not a wonderful thing if a spirit's using your body in that way. Why would a spirit who loves you thrash around on the floor? It, that spirit's not loving you. You wouldn't even do it to your own body. So why you allow a spirit to do it to your body? Can you see? And this is what happens a lot of times in these, ven in these venues is that we're often open completely. And this is, this is the thing in a, in a lot of these Pentecostal type and, and what do they call them mostly? Nowadays, uh, Holy Rollers. <laughs> Holy Rollers, that's your name for them. <laughs> that's your judgmental name for them, actually, Rayo. But anyway, um, but a lot of those churches um, have, uh, because of the atmosphere of being open to spirits completely, a lot of those events occur very, very easily and often. I went along to one in Barbados, it was very interesting. In Barbados, there's these whole groups of uh, churches who are focused in, incredibly on just allowing themselves to be completely open to spirit, as they call it, and to the Holy Spirit, they call it. And in the process of becoming open to the Holy Spirit, 
like half of the congregation's on the floor thrashing around, another half is speaking all these different uh, languages, and and a lot of them are singing at the top of their voice, and it's like like it's not very much organisation in the whole place, of course, <laughs> and and it's amazing to observe it and being present in it because in every single case you can see a different spirits of different conditions being uh, overcloaking them. And by the way, the majority of those spirits are not in a very, very good place at all. And so it's not very helpful really. But because it's something that feels different and, it, and they all equate it with a connection with God, they allow it. And this is allowed a lot around the world. And it's not something that's very helpful to dealing with emotions at all. Yeah. And you want to say? I just wanted to say for Simon as well, um, so I feel that there's also another thing that's happening for you and that's about emotion. Because you know th uh, on this path we all want to feel our emotions. Sometimes I feel like it gives you a sense of uh, I'm dealing, I'm, I'm having emotions so I'm getting somewhere when you're actually opening yourself to the emotions of it really what are other people so that's just another thing for you to be conscious of it's it's not going to help your soul if you're just living in and expressing someone else's emotion all the time and your own emotions might be a bit harder to get to but when you get to them and release them you'll feel a big difference yeah no no we're going to go there um, on the same topic, um, I have a lot of uh, fear of being raped and sexually abused. Um, and I was processing some of this, I think, think it was just last night. Um, and particularly my dad projecting on me sexually and not feeling loved and I was crying. And then I, I had these um, thoughts and feelings of my dad um, like raping me when I was about 10 or so. Mm -hmm. And I was crying, crying. And then I realised it wasn't actually me. It wasn't my memories. Yeah. Um, Spot on. <laughs> so there was a spirit around me, obviously. Yeah. And I've, before I got on this path, I've had literally like hundreds of memories of being raped and sexually abused by men. Yeah. Um, so at that point, I kind of stopped because I was like, it's not my emotions. Yeah. But something caused the attraction. Okay. <laughs> but it's very wise what you did, though, to actually realize, well, see, See, when it's not your emotion, sooner or later you will have a feeling that it's not your emotion, that it's somebody else's. And, uh, the, and many of you younger people in the audience who uh, are going to become mediumistic very rapidly, more mediumistic very rapidly. And so because obviously the less emotional injuries we have, the more rapidly we become mediumistic and therefore the more open we become to spirits have feeling stuff through us. So what was happening for yourself was you there feeling an emotion? Do you mind me asking the personal question, do you feel your father abused you? I don't think he did. Okay. I think spirits abused me though. Okay, so... so he projected on me sexually though. He projected on you yeah. sexually. So the injury that Dad had, remember I talked about this just earlier, the injury Dad had was that he was open to projecting sexually onto his daughter, right? Now that causes an attraction of spirits who are open to sexually abusing his daughter. And because he's got that injury, he's not going to protect his daughter emotionally from that occurring. Does that make sense? What about mum's emotional injury? Uh, she was sexually abused. When she was little? Yeah. Okay. So mum was sexually abused when she was little. So straight away we can see the dynamic occurring here that leaves you open to being sexually abused by spirits. Yeah. And that's the abuse emotions that you're feeling. Does that make sense? So the key is to allow yourself to feel them. The problem is <laughs> that that is going to then also attract, until it's healed, women spirits who have been sexually abused giving you their memories. Now a lot of people then go, well, um, then, well what can we do about that? Well, this is what you can do about it. Allow yourself to feel their life and allow yourself to feel what happened to them at that particular place. Yeah. Because if you allow yourself to feel it, what will happen is it will heighten your own feelings and you'll release the emotion more, generally. But don't get out of your emotion. Mm -hmm. 
right? And this is something that we've got to be very careful doing. When you step out of your emotion, now that spirit can just feel their emotions through you and it doesn't benefit you at all anymore. That's what happened for you, wasn't it? You, you started to feel her emotions rather than your own? Um, it, yeah, it, yeah, uh, yeah, I think yeah. so. Because so it was, I was like, Daddy, stop doing this, Daddy, stop doing this. Good. And I, but I don't feel... It was your dad. It was my dad. No. Exactly. So, so you are now feeling her emotions. Now, just before that occurred, there was a reason why you switched from feeling your emotions to her emotions. What was the reason? What do you think it was? Not wanting to feel my emotions. What were you feeling just before? What was can I feeling? You, can um, you remember? I... Probably not feeling loved by my dad. Yeah, so there's some emotion there you didn't want to feel, which straight away gets you out of that zone and feeling somebody else's stuff instead. Now, you're mediumistic enough to be able to sit down and just feel their emotions and talk to them about it. So you can talk to that girl that was abused by her dad when she was 10. Right? And you can talk to her about how to feel her emotions and how to work your way through those emotions. Millie, you've done that very often, haven't you? Like whenever these spirits have come to you, you've talked to the mum, you've talked to the person and helped them work through their emotions. So, so you know, if you need some people with experience doing that, you know, Millie's one of those persons who's done that quite a lot. So, Yeah, the reason that I asked was because I have had similar experience with women's spirits and coming in and suddenly I'm feeling huge emotions that are not my own but right before that happened I was usually wanting to avoid a, a, not necessarily an emotion ab about anything sexual it might have been like the thing of not feeling loved by your dad or a shame emotion or a law of compensation emotion mm -hmm. and often um, I've had spirits just hook straight in at that point so yeah. mm -hmm. yep. thanks if we go over to Tim I want to thank Simon for bringing that up because um, as a question I wanted to ask today was about overcloaking because um, yeah I definitely feel like that has dominated uh, all of my life. Yep. Um, probably since being on this path I can probably remember two times where I actually felt like myself. Yeah. Because um, I, I found it um, quite difficult um, when you had given us a list to run through of things, to, emotions to feel about how you felt for the day. And whenever I've gone to look at the list, whenever I wake up in the morning, I look at it and I can't circle one of them because I don't know who I am today. And, um, yeah, and there's the question I would like to ask is how, how do I reconnect with myself when I've only had a few blinks of light of who I actually was? Mm -hmm. um, Very difficult, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I find I'm a carpenter and I know now that it is fear when I decide to leave my body. Yeah. Um, and there's also a spirit interaction coming in where they, they, uh, they like to torment me in a way. Um, um, for the humour. I can feel myself leave my body at the instant of fear, um, usually from a projection of anger. And it's because I'm using a hammer a lot or um, sharp objects, it's almost like um, you're underwater, is how your vision goes, so it's cloudy, um, and your body doesn't feel like it's connected. Um, gravity sort of changes in an instant. Yeah. And I get afraid um, when I'm using my hammer because I can feel it happen through a projection and no matter how much I think about it, in about 30 seconds I've hurt myself somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Or I've hit my finger or cut myself. Cut or yourself or... Yeah, I'm scarred all over because of it. Yeah. yeah. So, so you, they project anger at you, you go into a state of fear, you go out of body and then within 30 seconds you've injured yourself generally. Yeah. Yep. And um, the worst part is you can see it happening and you cannot stop, stop it, it. Um, intellectually. You just so yeah. how long has this happened for you, Tim? Like, how long has this been going on? All your life that you can remember? Yeah. Mm. 
Just stay present, Tim. Just stay present. Stay present. It's okay to feel fear. Stay present. That's it. Just stay present. All of my life, yeah, and I've put it down to just being goofy. Yeah, and other people would have put it down to you being goofy too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So Tried mum and dad, to laugh about it often. Mum and dad said probably you're accident prone and all that stuff. Yeah. Just stay present. That's it. It's okay to feel the fear, man. So what, what I want to do is just explain to you what's going on for you and then, and then give you some practical things to, to be able to deal with it, like in terms of overcome it. Now, the spirits don't want you to hear this, so what we're going to do is just pray for, you, pray for you to just be protected from them for a little bit so you can at least hear this. Um, the spirits with him are quite uh, nasty to Tim uh, at times. They have this... Uh, <laughs> They have this viewpoint that if they can, they, they project anger at him as a joke. They feel that um, they can project anger at him and he'll do something stupid and then they'll all laugh at him because of it. That's, that's how they do it. That they actually are not very powerful spirits at all, Tim. No, they're very weak. They're very weak. They actually can't harm your life very much at all. That's the truth. But these are, these are guys who have passed in the spirit world who... Um, who just get a lot of joy out of, uh, out of watching other people's discomfort. They're the kind of guys who you would imagine on earth, you know, who would drive along in a, in a souped up car, terrorising people just for the joy of it, you know what I mean, on earth. And then they pass in the spirit world and they still try to get the same, they still try to get the same kicks emotionally by doing this to Tim. So the first thing to understand is that there is no reason for you to actually be afraid of them. They have no power over you, actually. And um, the only power they have is the power you give them because of you going out of body. And the only reason, they know that you can go out, of, they know you'll go out of body every time you feel somebody's anger. So, so let's look at what's happening for you. So there's you. You've got these group of spirits and there's a number of them, as you know around you, who've been around you most of your life, right? Yep. And they're, all, they're just hanging around you because it's somebody, it's the way they see it, it's, it's somebody weak I can pick on to actually just torment. If you can imagine them like a group of schoolyard bullies, like that's what they're like. They're actually totally powerless, though, in the spirit world to actually do it to anyone on earth. So what they've got to do is hook into an emotion. They've got to find a person with a specific emotion. And the specific emotion is, I'm afraid of anger. I'm terrified of anger. That's the emotion that they're looking for. So what they did a long, long time ago, like they, they were searching. These were men who passed over in the, you know, before Tim even was born. And they just were searching for, for, for men, who, children who had been born, who had this emotion. Now, they don't even see it as an emotion. What they see it as is a colour a colour within the spirit body that they can recognise as somebody that they can pick on. Does that make sense? That's how they see it. So they, they're just scanning the entire audience right now looking for a person with the same colour. Does that make sense? If I find a person with the same... Oh, I can pick on that person. He's got exactly the same as Tim. I can do the same thing to him as I'm doing to Tim. Does that make sense? And that's all they do. That's they, all they spend their life doing at the moment. So that's the group of spirits who are around Tim. So, Tim, what they're connecting with is your fear of anger. Yeah, come to, to realise over the last couple of weeks that that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. you because are terrified of anger. I've had that a lot in my early stages of my life where um, <coughs> I was... My father left when I was four and I was without a father. And oh, A stepfather came into my life when I was about 12. Um, I've always felt confused quite sexually and my mother and my older sister, they fought aggressively and I was extremely afraid of that. And I feel like that's where I left myself quite often because I didn't want to be a part of that because I felt in danger myself. Yeah, okay. 
So, so the fear of your anger is the emotion, but your response to that emotion is to go out of body, is to, to, to withdraw from your physical self. And it's the act of withdrawing from your physical self that causes your injuries, which then, of course, heightens their enjoyment of the entire process. I feel laughter in the, I feel laughter in the air as it's happening. Yeah. yeah. And I feel anger towards them. I, all, I feel like I should laugh at myself because I feel goofy, yeah. but I feel anger because I've come to realise what's happened towards them about what's going on, but obviously that anger doesn't prevent it from happening. No, it won't. What, what, so what's kicking it off is the desire to avoid anger. Yeah. So that's what's kicking off. You desire to avoid anger so much that you go out of body whenever it's present. And as soon as you go out of body, all these things happen, of course, within a few moments. And that then just you know, makes you feel even worse in the end. Now, the things to address are these. Firstly, I want to get away from somebody's anger. So what I need to do is in my emotional processing work is to just put myself in my room or something like that and to feel the anger that these spirits are actually projecting at you. Now, I've had millions of spirits projecting anger at me all at once, and so I know how intense spirit projections can be. So what I did with that was I just stayed in my body, stayed present in my body, laid on my bed, and just allowed all this anger just to come at me, and just allowed my fear to be present, and I stayed in my body feeling my fear. So I allowed all my you know, body to shake and feel terrible, and just allow the feeling of fear to overcome me within that space. And during that time, I just pray to God, just allow this process to keep going. Allow this process to keep going. Allow this process to keep going. And I just allowed it to keep going and keep going. And for, I've had to deal with it many times, of course, so I've had many experiences like this. And, and what happens is that I stay in my body the entire time. And what I try to do while I'm in my body is breathe. One of the best ways to stay in your body is to breathe diaphragmatically. Yeah, I noticed I tense up. I didn't notice that I tensed up until we had that fear revisited when I allowed myself to breathe through it. Yeah. And I noticed a lot of physical effects have died off. Exactly. So it was gastric and all that. And, yep. Um, but, yeah, I've understood that staying in the fear is obviously going to be the key to, to letting it out. Yeah. Yep. If you can just pass the microphone back to Millie because she's got a few things she wants to add to. So. Turn it right up. Yeah. Just about um, staying in the body, uh, I found that like sitting on like a blow up uh, type cushion, um, like on the ground, kind of like ch connects you with your bottom chakras yeah. and helps you to stay kind of like present. a bit more of a present in your body. Yeah. For me, um, that hasn't always worked, I found, uh, because when I often sat up, I would compress my stomach and that would actually stop me from breathing. So it just depends a bit on different, you know, different emotional injuries you have. For me, having my body stretched out so that this part of my body could stay open and then breathing diaphragmatically into the diaphragm area was the way I could stay present in my body. The other thing, you need to concentrate on staying present in your body during the day. So my suggestion is in the morning, get up and do some exercise first. Do, do you follow me? Yeah. Exercise um, where you have to breathe into your, like into your diaphragm. So if it means going for a jog or going for a swim or something like that, as soon as you get up or, or close enough to, just to reconnect you with your body, right at the start of the day. Yeah, I found that um, since I've sort of realised that fear is what, and anger is what is keeping me in it, I've actually had a desire to start swimming. Good. Um, yep. In the morning, because we have a pool. So yep. I, I've always been quite, uh, don't really like pools, because of, of the fear, I don't like the cold. Yeah. And um, now I've found that getting so up we'll and... So with two issues here. Yeah. Like <laughs> fear and the... <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, with the laying out, I've found that that actually does work good. Um, it's just when... 
there's times where I am disconnected when I go to do that, which is during the middle of the day, and I feel the suppression. Yep. And um, then. Do you work oh, for somebody else or work for yourself? I work for um, a boss, and right. me and him work side by side. Yep. Yeah. Have you described to him what's going on, and you know? Yeah, he knows totally. What's going he's. I've given him some audio which he listens to, so yep. he's he's quite. So good. he's okay with what's going on. If if every time you notice yourself going out of body, if you can put down tools and go for a jog or a swim straight away and then come back to work, even if you've got to work a half an hour later or something like that, that will help you reconnect with your body. You need to stay connected with your body as much as you possibly can and allow. And then when you've got some private time, allow yourself to feel your fear about these anger projections. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, when you allow yourself to feel the fear of the anger projections, what will happen is that you will slowly come to just feel the fear instead of acting upon your fear. At the moment, you're acting upon the fear by going out of body. And that's what causes the rest of the results, uh, is the actual act of going out of body causes the other results. And that's what they're hooked into. Yeah. They're hooked into that. And it seems um, when I do go out of body, I don't sort of totally come back unless I've hurt myself. Yes. And that's, I suppose, when they get their fix, that they've laughed and they've... Yeah. Can you see also the act of hurting yourself causes you to have some pain in your body? Physical pain. Which yeah. brings you back into your body. Yeah. Right? So that's why oftentimes you will hurt yourself because you're actually hurting yourself to bring yourself back into your body. Yeah. Right? So that, that's the irony of a lot of these law of attractions. They're already telling you what you need to do. Get back in your body and you'll be right sort of thing. Right? But what you need to do is allow yourself to start focusing not as a, as a daily practice to get into your body, get into your body. This will also help you get into a lot of your other emotions because it's the avoidant, the way you've avoided emotion in the past has been getting out of body. So if you can stay present in your body, it's going to help you immensely with regard to this. And these spirits won't put up with it very long. The reason why they won't is because, you know, they're, they've been hooked into doing this with you for years, right, all your life. How old are you now? Um, 25 now. 25. So 25 years they've been hooked into doing this with you pretty much, right? So, so do you think after a week of not doing it, they're going to be beside themselves, right? They're going to want to find another person pronto that they can do it to because they can't do it to you anymore. So you'll find this situation will change very rapidly for you. It's not the same kind of situation as many others. See, many other situations are not quite as obvious in terms of like many other situations of sexual projection type situations or other things like that, they are sometimes a lot harder to heal. This situation can be healed very rapidly because these spirits are going to give up very rapidly. Because they, they, if you take away what gives them their kicks, what are they going to do with that? Yeah, I feel different ones come and go at times because it depends what situations I'm in, whether I'm um, actually next to a woman or next to a man. Yes. Because... Um, there was um, a little bit self-punishing as well. So um, there was um, an instance where I um, threw something to the side and my wife walked past and I didn't actually notice she was walking there. Yeah. And um, it nearly hit her and she mentioned that and straight away I went into, oh, I feel bad about that. Um, but I, at the same time I went out of body and I was actually um, sawing a fence post at the time and what I what had done is I'd slip with my saw and I'd cut my left arm. Yeah. And then blood came out and I woke up and I just realised that every time that um, I feel bad about doing something, I hurt myself. Yes. And that's a very important thing for everyone. Every time you injure yourself, it's a pro it is an act of self-punishment emotionally. So, you know, I have quite a few of them some days, you'll notice, where I've had a, bandage here, a bandage here and a bandage there or whatever. And that's because when you go into a self-punishing act, you will usually physically act it out at the soul level you phys finish up physically acting out and punish yourself physically as well. Yep. And that's very common. Thank you. It's time for a break. It's time for a break? Is it one and a half hours gone already? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let, what we're going to do is have a break a little earlier today. And what we'd like is if we can come back by, uh, was it 3.30 we decided? If we can come back by 3.30, it must be about 2.30 or something like that now. And uh, we'll keep on answering some of these questions. Is that right?